Hey guys, in this video I will give you 10 tips on how to study more efficient, especially with solvers. These tips will be for any kind of uh, skill level and I have a controversial opinion that you should use solvers as soon as possible, as long you are not trying to blindly copy paste this solution and the solver. I make this video because I see it all the time in my students, even the players that play up to 500ml, that they use solvers in a very unproductive uh, way. By that they limit their potential. So let's jump into the example spot that I choose to showcase these 10 tips. I will be using GTO Wizard and the AI function and the node log function of a GTO Wizard. So don't worry, I will be explaining briefly this function why we go through the spot. So I choose the spot UTG versus big blind on queen 7 6 2 tone. I will go over the inputs real fast uh, 100 big blind stacks, simple uh, bed sizes, uh, rake structures NL500, and um, the open ray sizes 2x. Just that you know with which kind of uh, inputs we work with. So big blind call, and we need to choose the board. We choose the queen 7 6 2 tone. Okay, so first tip, a well-executed simple strategy is much better than a complex strategy executed poorly. What do I mean by that? Is that, let's say, on queen 7 6 2 tone, we want to find out our seabed strategy. Very common spot, you just want to know, okay, can I uh, seabed range here or do I need to mix my strategy? And uh, there my tip is keep it simple you could go ahead and see that range in any kind of situation but you will end up losing a lot of ev in certain situations like utg versus big blind on let's say five four twos villain has six three fives four deuces so he has a, a big nutted advantage over us therefore in theory we would need to check back a lot if we decide then to CPAT range in this situation, we will end up losing a lot of EV, a lot more than here, for example, on Queen 7 6. So we need to know how much EV am I willing to lose for the simplification. For that, we need a threshold. A good threshold, from my opinion, is 1% at the start. So I am willing to lose 1% of the pot. So I'm willing to give 1% of the pot to my opponent to play a more simple strategy. With this threshold, you will have something to monitor when, when you study. So you could, for example, go over all the board types, board textures and the most frequent spots and say, okay, I want to have a strategy that loses 1% maximum. And then after like uh, some time, you can go over again and say, okay, now I, I aim for 0 0.5, then 0 0.25, and you get more accurate with time. Don't go crazy at the beginning and try to play too accurate because it's very, very complicated to play a mixed strategy. We should not underestimate the complexity of it. So let's see how much EV are we actually losing on Queen 7 6 when we decide to range bet. Here I like it to make it interactive. I will try it out in this video. I do it uh, all the time with my students. Then I ask them questions. I let them figure out first by themselves the answer and then we look together where they went wrong when there's something wrong etc so this is also my uh, next tip before you look at a solution so don't say okay is do we see bad range and then you just look or just looking at the what is the seabed strategy just try to figure out by yourself how it would look like so you invest more time so you're more invested therefore when you are wrong if you have something wrong there or like something is totally different than you expected your brain will catch up on that and will is much more interested to figure out why it happened like this why why you were wrong it's very important then for the brain to figure out the why and it keeps uh, it you keep it easier in your brain the memory of it so that's a big big tip this will increase the study efficiency by a lot also, you will be able to go deeper into the logic behind plays. You will find out things that you would never find out if you don't ask this question why. 
why is something how it is so let's go ahead and look into the spot and our goal is to find a simplified strategy that doesn't lose more than one percent of ev so first of all let's look into the seabed strategy what is actually correct to do in theory like in a vacuum when the solver plays against the solver we will see that the solver is mixing a lot so normally players look here uh, into the spot and say okay 40 percent check this is a lot so therefore i i play a mixed strategy but we want to see now how much is actually betting range losing uh, compared to the mixed strategy how much ev so for that we need to uh, make a simplified solution where we range bet for that i use ai so the ai function of gto wizard i have here another tab so let's go into ai solve and yeah i will not go in depth into the um different options we just keep it very simple for this video i just want to find out simplified strategies that lose less than one percent with help of my uh, of the tips that i give you so this is the goal let's put in just the range bet and we need to delete the check i will make a, a video in the future about the uh, functions more in depth so now we gave the in position a range bet therefore we can check now if we lose more than one percent in this tab here ranges so we can compare here the ev the mixed strategy has 66.41 and the mix has 66 uh, 65.25 so we lose more than one percent so the answer would be if we keep it again shallow uh we cannot simplify we need to mix our strategy but we don't consider many factors that play into the into this ev so many factors will change this ev it will increase or decrease the ev that we uh, have in the full range bet so for that we need to ask again a lot of why questions and if we need to use the word if if something is like this what happens so cause and effect is very important in understanding um, poker in everything but especially also poker to have a good understanding you need to be able to figure out if i change this factor this will happen with the other factor so and this is very complex in poker everything is connected this is my uh, next big tip is everything is connected so if you change let's say the turn strategy so let's say the villain is overfolding on turns my flop strategy will change in ev or the big plan is not check racing how he should this is changing my ev so i cannot just say okay i lose uh, more than one percent i cannot simplify this is not correct like this and it's very shallow with this we are not efficient as we could be also a very interesting question that i don't see many players asking themselves is am i able to perform like this uh, gto ev in the mixed strategy probably not your ev will low will be lower than this number that you see so why do we go ahead and compare this number with the range bet this is not realistic a good way to test yourself to test how good you perform in the mixed strategy and to have a more realistic view of the spot and how you perform is to use the range builder where you can put in your range that you would see bet or you use um, the node lock function in PO solver or any other kind of uh, solver and you put in your seabed range and see what ev you actually have and then you compare this to the range bed so this is an interesting one and you can ask many other questions like this that will lead you to the simplified route more than the complex strategy very often not only the 66.41 for the mixed strategy will be different also the ev for the range bed will change a lot based on mistakes that we find from villain but also things that we probably have a very difficult time implementing let's say for example we see that uh, if we range bet the flop 
the turn gets very tricky. No normally it's the other way around when you use a mixed strategy. Normally the, the turns get uh, more tricky to play. That would decrease the EV of your strategy because it gets more complex for you. So therefore you make more mistakes if you didn't study it well. So all these things we need to calculate in when we uh, compare the EVs. So let's look into the range bet tree and let's find some factors which will change the 65.25% that we currently have EV. So the first thing that comes in mind if you ask yourself questions is is the big plant really able to play like the solver? So mostly not. So we need to find out which kind of mistakes he's likely to make and how they are affecting our EV. Because we, when we choose a range bet, we are for sure getting the 65.25% because we cannot make something wrong when we range bet. Okay, so let's look into it. For that, again, try to figure out yourself the, the big blind strategy in your head before you look. So I give you a moment. So like pause the, pause the video, think about it, and then we look into the big plan reaction together and then we find uh, things that you would actually do wrong and then you learn also something so you improve your big blind reaction while you try to figure out a seabed strategy so it always goes hand in hand just to study a spot in isolation again is not the most efficient way i think so um, pause the video and resume let's look into it so we see the solution here how the big plan should react we see a quite high check raise frequency but just this will not tell us too much to be honest i look always in the strategy tab and look out for the very unintuitive things that i think my population uh, is not uh, getting so let's look something like ace 8 the very very unintuitive things are ace 9 ace 8 the very close things so these are the first things that i try to not lock out so i'm closer to reality you can use mda data or uh, like stats on your opponent which is even better to tell how much they're overfolding so if you have for example a villain that has seven percent check raise instead of uh, 11 this guy with seven percent will probably check raise six four never and the other guy with 11 percent will check raise maybe 50 or 75 percent so uh it's always some subtle changes there but in general they under check raise and they under call so we want to make a general strategy but be able to even uh, adapt from this general exploitive strategy that we have in mind even to make it even more specific to the opponent if we have enough data on him okay let's go ahead in the node block i will show you how i do it okay so i will keep it very shallow or like very simple for now I will not go too in depth for this. I will make a future video where I go more uh, into the functions of the wizard. But uh, for now, just the basic things. We want to delete this very unintuitive things. Keep it simple. Fold here, ace9, ace8, ace5, ace4. Then we fold out um, other things like king9. And um, here, I would keep in the king10 with the king of hearts even though it's still quite hard to get but i don't want to over not look at the beginning if i i want to go ahead and not look it later on to see how much it makes an effect if he's uh, getting this one or not i can do it but first of all i want to do it in a very very like passive way let's say the not lock to be on the safe side but here I see I can pick the single combos, the 10 of hearts, I will uh, let him forward. This is a really unintuitive, I think, still. Um, the ace 10 with the 10 of hearts, I will let him forward. King jack with the jack of hearts, I do the same, but I will keep the king of hearts in. Okay. What else do we find? I think that's it, mostly. Hmm. I, I guess like in general they will just have low frequency from everything but for now we, we keep it like this to keep it simple uh, just this one probably I will keep like this 50 50 just to make here a bit less other than that it looks fine so this is my first node block and then I would go ahead and look a bit more accurate later on if I really see 
I'm still above this 1%. I, I will make it more accurate, uh, but be always careful that you are not biased, that you don't kind of force it to be under the 1%. This is always dangerous to use the node lock to make your estimations right, or like use the node lock to, to confirm your place or to make certain plays um, correct is very, very uh, dangerous. So you can misuse the node lock very easy. So be careful with that. That's why I say be more passive. There's another tip. So the next tip would be um, if you have a node lock, check with your coach or with other players that play similar stakes if your node lock is fine. So especially when you are starting out using this tool, but even if you're experienced, you, you will be always kind of biased. So it's always good to have someone else looking over your node locks. Not every single one at the beginning, probably yes, because if you're very new, you will make a lot of mistakes. But later on, just have someone sometimes at least to look over your node locks. That's uh, very, very important, I think. So let's go ahead and lock this one, lock all. Okay, so here again, this is now our node lock. Here again, we can ask ourselves before we look, how is it affecting our EV? So what is our guess, how much our EV is changing? At the beginning, it's just a guessing game. You will just guess. But with time, you will have a feeling for the kind of like the thresholds or like um, how much it's, uh, it is actually affecting the EV uh, based on what he's doing. So you can kind of tell, oh, okay, if he's uh, folding ace nine or folding this, then it's going up like this percentage. But if he's starting to fold also this, 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 or doing this, this and that, it's going uh, this amount up, so you get a good feeling for it. But this takes time and practice. Okay, so and also the UTG um, reaction. So what we will do now in position because we changed up the the strategy. Our in position reaction to the race will change. So let's look into it. You can pause and then look into it with me. So let's look into the differences in EB first, and then we look at the imposition reaction to the check raise, different check raise strategy. So let's go to the quick blind again here. So we see 65.89. If I remember correctly, it's around 0.3% higher. The EB now that we get, uh, have in position, and we just node locked few combos. So it's a very passive node lock. Probably you, you will have uh, more EV against most players in your pool. But like this, you're on the safe side. You could go ahead and node lock maybe a few combos more. But we keep it like this now. And we see that we are already under this 1% threshold. If you are a more experienced player and you want to achieve the 0 0.5 or even 0 0.25, you need to go a bit more deeper. So. There are other factors that again affect uh, this EV more. So for example, even if Willen would be able to check raise this 90.2 even percent, you need to consider how difficult it is to execute the turn continue correctly as the out of position after you check raise. It's a very difficult node. So all these things affect our EV. If we think about how bad normally players play this node, this needs to increase our EV in, uh, in position. So again, something to consider. And you will find a lot of these things if you are more curious and when you ask yourself questions. So let's go ahead now and look at the UTG reaction to the tighter check raise. So again, think about it. How would you react versus a tighter check raise or against your population when they are check raising you on that board? And let's look into it. So bet and villain check raise. And then we see again very unintuitive things happening. So we didn't, if you remember, we didn't change a lot. And we start seeing king king folding, queen x folding a lot without the backdoor flusher. It's always folding. You can look also at the straight GV. So we see that um, they're calling like king queen without the backdoor. Art, it's pretty bad. We lose quite a bit of EV. Queen Jack, 0 0.2 uh, EV. So 
you see a very unintuitive reaction. I would not imagine that someone uh, thinks about folding ace queen, king queen here on that flop. But again, we need to consider factors that play into our decision here. We cannot just blindly copy again the solver and say, okay, we need to fold king queen off, uh, king queen suited or king queen off. We need to consider, okay, if he's check raising, how is he continuing the turn? Is he making big mistakes on the turn and most likely yes so these mistakes we need to consider when uh, having king queen here for example but i would go ahead and i would fold something like eights something uh, like fives like obvious things that would be close already close versus uh, a gto check race uh, strategy but i would not go ahead and go extreme with the ace queen king queen so always be careful there and again, you, you train your understanding there more if you think about other factors. You can really go deep here and uh, we could go now into call node and let's see the different turn types. How villain should continue the turn? What is he actually doing? All these kind of things. You can consider MDA data that's always good uh, of your pool. How they, uh, which, which mistakes they make on the turn after check racing. All these things you need to consider. So the next tip that I have is to take all the knowledge that you gained and to try to apply it in another spot. So for example, we, we know now, okay, we can range bet on queen seven, six, two tone, but what if the board is queen nine, eight, two tone with this comparing to other situations, we will again develop a deeper understanding because we see, for example, if we change it to queen nine, eight, tone that we lose much more EV than on queen seven six when we simplify or that villain is having a much more intuitive uh, reaction in the big blind so it's much uh, less likely that he makes mistakes all these things so you need to see these things and then we need to be able to understand why these things are happening and from that we get a better understanding of how ranges interact with boards, how different factors um, just interact with each other. So a change in the board texture, maybe even like uh, ranges pre-flop you can play around with, you can do all kinds of things. This is the nice thing, you can use the node lock function to test all kinds of theories that you have. If you have a problem, you can use the node lock function to find out solutions or to test your theory a very very interesting way of studying for the end i want to summarize the 10 main takeaways first well executed simple strategy over poorly executed complex strategy second don't look at the situation in isolation when you study everything is connected consider the bigger picture third let curiosity guide you the quality of your answers is determined by the quality of your questions or use the node lock function as a tool for deeper understanding of the solver. Fifth, when node locking, be very careful and confirm your estimations with an experienced coach or other players who play similar stakes. Sixth, before looking at the next action, try to figure it out yourself in your head and then see what you get wrong and why. Seven, comparing different situations and factors like stack sizes, positions, etc. Is a great way to find out and test your heuristics. 8. Focus more on general heuristics and don't get lost in small blocker questions. This one we didn't cover in the video, but just in general uh, or basically don't get lost into small blocker effects like why do I bluff this combo or the solver and uh, not the other one. Try to keep your questions focused more on finding out general concepts that you can apply in more situations so that your heuristics that you find out your knowledge is applicable to more situations and not just to this one specific spot with time you will get better in this you will get lost over and over again at the beginning you will be getting lost all the time maybe set a timer or something like a maximum i will keep the spot uh 15 minutes or something but go with your with your interest and your interest and your intuition will get better with time you will be able at some point 
to extract more and more value in shorter period of time. At the beginning, it feels sometimes like a waste of time. So don't don't worry about this and be patient with yourself. Nine, take notes and keep track of your progress maintain to maintain motivation. And ten, uh, this one we also didn't cover. It's just uh, how I uh, go about studying a spot or like when I want to improve a spot, I choose the spot based on importance and interest. So for example, blind versus blind, two bed spot has a much more uh, much higher importance than a four bit spot for example then study the spot and develop a strategy, a strategy for it so with these tips that i showed you you will go ahead and you develop a strategy then you drill the spot uh, this is a great way or i i drill the spot in wizard and i try to figure out where are my biggest mistakes still and um, i try to find very unintuitive things that I can take advantage of and then I refine my um, strategy and then when I play I focus intentionally on the spot when playing I ask questions about the spot I mark hands on only the spot and I try to implement the things that I learned till now to the spot so that it's focused your intention because poker is so broad and so big if your attention is not focused uh, it feels like you are not improving nowhere if you improve everywhere just a bit. So that's also a tip. Okay, that's it to my video uh, about how to make your study more efficient. I hope you took some value out of it. Thank you for watching and see you to the next one.